Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Toby here, and wait, 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 I know what you're thinking. Toby, can you just stop talking about Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl for five seconds? Fine, I got you. I do actually still want to continue one of the series that I was started up like a month or so ago. And that is the series where I stole from my good friend Epic Cubone one of his playlists. He has been doing a series where you imagine gym leaders in different times of the Pokemon world, like hundreds of years ago in Pokemon Legends Arceus. What would the other gym leaders have been like? Sorry, no, okay, I gotta, I gotta stop talking about that. I don't even think they had Pokemon gyms back then. But what would it have been like in a time when the region was different, with different gym leaders and with gym leaders to cover every single type? So far, I've done Kanto because that's the first one. And then I did the Sinnoh region because I'm a smart cookie. And now to give you a break from the Sinnoh region for five seconds, I've got this video about the Johto region. Who are the missing Johto gym leaders of each type? And how would I creatively try and incorporate them into a story without outright copying Emperor Cubone's video so that after this, you can go and if you want to see a full playlist of every single region, you can check out Emperor Cubone series. And let me know what you would do for some missing Pokemon gym leaders of Johto in the comments down below. So, just like before, the way that I did this is I went through the missing types of the Johto region, the types that we don't have a gym leader or elite four member or champion for. I went through those types, constructed what I would want to do, then watched Emperor Cubone's video to make sure that mine were as different as possible and where they overlapped, just tried to make mine as different as I possibly could. And the interesting thing about Johto is the types that it and its elite four members cover are to complement the types of the Kanto gyms. So those Kanto gyms, rock, water, electric, grass, Fire and Ground, though not Psychic and Poison because they're covered in the Elite Four with Will and Koga again. And then of course, finally, the Fairy type that didn't exist at that time. I took these types and said, okay, what am I gonna do for Pokemon gyms and how would I make them interesting? And first up, I want to introduce you to two at once. My Fairy and Grass gym that would be like a gold version gym or a silver version gym, depending on what version of the Johto games you're gonna play. Both of these gyms would be the third gym set in gold Goldenrod City in a future beyond Whitney. Whitney has vacated the gym probably to become the champion of the region with her mill tank. So naturally someone's gonna have to take over. If you're playing Pokemon Gold version or Heart Gold version or Brilliant Gold version, I don't know. Then you're gonna end up against the fairy type gym leader, the daycare lady. That's right, Whitney's gym is pretty fairy-like anyway in its aesthetic, but also it just makes sense for the daycare man and the daycare lady to be the gym leaders here. After all, many of the baby Pokemon that first appear in Johto have become fairy types over the years. Togepi is a central part of the Johto region and is a fairy type. And naturally, the Pokemon on this gym team are gonna be Cleffa, the ever so cute Snubble, and then of course, Togetic. And all the gym trainers are gonna be using Pokemon like Cleffa and Igglybuff, and maybe there'll be other baby Pokemon playing around the gym. It's the daycare has gotten an upgrade because so many people use it. Meanwhile, if you're playing Silver, Soul Silver, or Shining Silver version, or whatever it's gonna be called, then you're going up against the Grass Gym instead. Instead of the daycare couple taking over the gym, and now it's the grass, the plant lady who gives you the uh, squirt bottle. From next door, well, they've moved in and taken over the gym, added in some greenery, and just made it this nice big greenhouse type building. They're very inspired by the goings on of National Park and want to make National Park even bigger and better. You'll see lots of flower girls and gardeners as the trainer class here using Pokemon like Sunflora and Hoppip. And in fact, you could change the layout of Whitney's gym to be simply more like a hedge maze. I think that would work really, really well. And of course, the gym Pokemon, Sunken, Hoppip, and then I think Blossom would make for a really good third gym boss. Now, let's move from early game to late game with the water type gym. And I think there's only one place to put a water type gym, and that is on the Lake of Rage. Okay, you could do the Wild Islands, but I'm doing the Lake of Rage. I'm imagining a large classic kind of Japanese uh, palace sitting on the water, sitting out on the lake with wooden Gyarados ordaining the whole building. Ever since Team Rocket left, the Gyarados have been calm enough to tame, and the strong, like, seventh gym trainers that now are there, they all have Gyarados, they all have water Pokemon. They've built this palace that sits on the lake, and now it makes more sense as to why you can actually fly to the Lake of Rage. Maybe there's a Pokemon Center and a whole new town out there. And of course, this whole palace and town is looked over by royalty who protect it. And that royalty is gonna be very, very strong using very, like, military-like water Pokemon. 
Thus, you can have Quillfish, who's inspired by sea mines. You've got Remoraid, which makes for a nice thematic kind of gun Pokemon, because that's what it's inspired by. Remoraid evolving then, of course, into Octillery, that has its bazooka cannon mouth. Mantine, which could be seen as a warplane, and then finally Slowking, which is the king of the gym. These Pokemon will make for a great and kind of creative seventh Pokemon gym that is, of course, water type. Then, looking to the fire gym, let's go back in time and do Johto Legends. Perhaps a Pokemon Legends Hello? Set in the pre-story to Johto just a few hundred years ago, perhaps before the tower burnt down, it's interesting to me that when you battle fire breathers in the games, they're sort of, in gold and silver at least, kind of depicted as the villains. They're hanging out with thugs and robbers and Team Rocket members, and they're always in places and skulking around in places that they shouldn't be. And see, the burnt tower of Johto has a few different tellings of the story, depending on what media you're looking at. Some talk about a lightning bolt that hit the tower during a storm. Other tellings of the story tell of, like, bandits and thieves and robbers that attacked the tower and burnt it down. Perhaps it's these gym trainers that attacked the tower because they worshipped the other tower where ho resided, but not the Lugia one. So while, yeah, our gym trainers are going to be fire breathers and robbers, our gym leader is much more respectful of the culture of Ecritic City and would not want no, no such harm to happen to the towers, but ultimately needs to show strength as a gym leader and starts a battle by sending out Magby. Magby is an easy Pokemon to beat, especially for a fourth Pokemon gym, so Slugma is up next. But if you defeat Slugma, which you probably will, of course, using your strong water type Pokemon, then Houndoom makes for a great ace here. And being part dark type is very in theme with what I'm going for here. For the ground type, this was kind of a hard one to come up with. I wasn't really sure where it would suit, but there is this whole big Pokemon ranch, the Moo Moo Milk Ranch, that sits in the Johto region north of Olivine City. And thinking about ranching got me thinking about that Pokemon episode where Ash and the gang meet Donphan. And Donphan is used to harvest a certain kind of like gemstone, like amberite, I think it's called. Or maybe it's just amber. I can't... Yeah, Ambright, well remembered me. In the episode Roll Out Don Fan, that's what they're used for. They've got a good nose for sniffing out the stuff. And so that got me thinking about like ranch Pokemon and that maybe this location would be good for a gym where people use Pokemon like Miltank and Tauros with Earthquake. Ugh, there's just not a lot of good ground types in, in the Johto region. That's the video we're doing. I wanted to say Sinnoh because I've been talking so much about Sinnoh lately. And I do think the gym leader could have a Pokemon like Miltank or Tauros to compliment, but the main Pokemon here are going to be Swinub, Peloswine, and then of course Donphan as the ace. This is honestly my least favorite of the gyms I've come up with, but let's just go with it. Hey, if you can think of a better ground gym for Johto using mostly Johto Pokemon that doesn't like conflict with Emperor Cubone series, you gotta let me know in the comments. However, I do have a good idea for the electric type gym, and it's interesting, I misremembered something about this region. I thought that Jasmine, before she was a steel type gym leader, was an electric type gym leader, and that made sense because she's hanging out with her Ampharos in the light house and she's got her Magnemite in the gym. But no, I was wrong. In Olivine City, before she becomes a steel type gym leader, she was a rock type gym leader. I guess Onyx was her ace. And given that rock is a missing type, I could have done Jasmine's gym here, but I have a different idea for the rock type. So instead, I'm going to imagine a world where Jasmine was at some point an electric type gym leader. Now, sadly, there's not a lot of electric Pokemon that you can easily put into the gym here. I, I could put Pichu in, but Pichu is so low level. I'm going to have to give her her Magnemite which she already has in her regular gym battle. And then we'll go for Raichu, which has evolved from a Pichu, and hopefully that's Johto enough for you. And then, of course, Ampharos as the ace. I think this would make for a good mid-gym. Heck, maybe she's changing type again and moving on from the Steel type and moves the gym up into the Lighthouse because her gym in Johto is pretty uninventive and it does sort of feel like the Lighthouse would make for a much better gym for her. And then finally, we have the Rock type. And I know you're thinking, ah, the Rock type, Tyrannic our time. Let's do this thing. But no, I'm thinking of maybe not even a gym, maybe just a type specialist. Maybe after you've beaten the game and beaten the Elite Four, you get a call from Professor Elm and Professor Elm's like, hey, could you fly over to the, the lab for a sec? Something weird is going on. And you're like, all right, all right, Professor Elm, I'm heading over. And Professor Elm's like, hey, there's been a disturbance in the next town over, Cherry Grove City. Someone has set up shop there and is calling it Cherry Groove City. Could you head over and see what's going on? And so you hop on your bike and cycle over to the new Cherry Groove City. There's lots of thugs and criminal types about and they all have their Larvitars and Pupitars ready to battle and you are getting ready for a big battle. If this is post Elite Four, they're going to have Tyranitar, right? Wrong. 
the gym leader has appeared and reveals themselves to be Mira B. And Mira B is ready for a double battle with four Pseudo Wudo, the ace rock Pokemon of the Johto region, and a shuckle that he stole off some kid in Sianwood City. Hey, he's all about snagging them Pokemon, and Shuckle was a shadow Pokemon, of course, in Colosseum and Gale of Darkness, and Pseudo Wudo was a shadow Pokemon that he had in that game. So you're gonna battle him in a cherry groove battle. Yeah, that's an original idea. You didn't have that one, Emperor Keybone. <laughs> But those are just my thoughts of how I would introduce these missing type specialists into the Johto region. Obviously, I've still got Hoenn and Beyond to go, and if I'm not too distracted by Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I will get on and do them, of course. That said, let me know about the missing type specialists that you would put into the Johto region based on these types, and uh, get creative in the comments. Let me know if you like any of these. Thank you all for watching, and of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master! A tremendous thank you to those of you who go above and beyond to support this channel financially, including those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. And a special shout out to the big patrons of this month, JD Gottlich, Michael Hornchew, and Matty Barr. As well as the Christum. Thank you!